Remate, 3D Connection. Uh, eight years ago when I began this channel, uh, I was getting knocked back left, right and centre, sending out emails to companies and 3D Connection were the first company ever unprompted to reach out and actually want to work with me. And it's just a bonus that the products are actually awesome, right? They've got an awesome reputation in this field and their products are top quality, right? Which is rare in a market with zero competition. They've got no competition at all, not even from cheap sellers on Amazon. Right, and they've made their way through all the devices on your desk. Right, they started with the 3D mouse, right, the little cap devices. And then they went you know, small to large, big slab devices, wide and wireless, and then through to regular mice, right, the CAD mouse, CAD mouse wireless. And people started asking, well, what about a keyboard, mate? Right, you were formed by Logitech back in 2001. I don't know if they still are owned by Logitech or not, but uh, what about a keyboard? Well, now they have. Introducing the 3D Connection Keyboard Pro, available very soon, if not, if not already. I'm not sure when, but very soon. Right then, the Keyboard Pro. So when the marketing guy from 3D Connection got in touch and said, look, we're making a keyboard, it's coming out soon. Uh, do you want to check it out? I said, yes. Uh, immediately, my brain went to, look, mate, you're coming in here very late for a keyboard. So my expectations were immediately set at a certain level uh, based on this. A lot of the users out there who are going to be interested in buying something like this are already going to have a keyboard of sorts, right? Whether it be people in enterprise or whether it be people like me, people like you, people who are working at home, individual solo contractors, small businesses, anyone who can afford a device like this who are already 3D Connection customers, they've probably already invested in a good keyboard by this point. It's 2021. The keyboard market is saturated with very, very good keyboards already good professional keyboards by other brands. Take the Razer keyboard, for example, that's already out there. And you need to be coming into the market with something that offers enough to make people want to ditch a keyboard that they've already bought and move over to yours. And you need to have some decent innovation in here that makes it worthwhile. And being 3D Connection, I kind of expect you guys to have done that. As for the specs of the Keyboard Pro, 3D Connection, are they're going to be asking over £100 for the Keyboard Pro. So I would expect the specs on this to be pretty impressive. And they're all printed on the back of the box. So let's read them in full. Leading with designed for your comfort. So the narrow keyboard design with detached numpad enables a symmetrical position of your hands and forearms to provide a natural, comfortable posture. So they're leading in with the fact that the number pad is detachable and will be placed either side, which is it's a bit of an odd point to lead with considering a detachable number pads not necessarily a new sort of unique selling point you can buy wireless number pads off of Amazon if that's something you really needed or wanted uh, for about £10. So, okay, odd one to lead with, but okay. Uh, keys that adapt to the app that you're using is the second of the five specs on the back of the box. You can personalize 12 dedicated function keys with application specific commands. Uh, so the Keyboard Pro has 12 customizable buttons along the top with four additional buttons along the numpad pro. Uh, you see, the thing is, these are the exact same buttons that you've had if you've got a 3D mouse and a CAD mouse. Uh, we're using the exact same 3D Xware software driver with the exact same API calls. So basically, all they've done is they've taken the exact same buttons from the 3D mice and the CAD mouse with the exact same software and just packed it to the top of the keyboard. Which, okay, that, that's fine, I guess, if you don't have a 3D mouse or a CAD mouse, but okay. Uh, programmable wireless numpad is the third of the specs uh, a wireless numpad with extended programmability uh, conveniently integrates into your optimized workflow uh, the encrypted wireless connection keeps it secure from all those hackers <laughs> who's, who's hacking your numpad uh, right so the wireless numpad look the, the, the numpad itself can act as its own wireless hub which i thought that's actually really useful right if i can get rid of a few dongles and just pair a lot of my wireless devices to the numpad i see a good use for that 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 might actually draw me into using this until I realized 3D Connection have gatekeeped this numpad into only being able to pair their own devices to it. So you can only pair 3D Connection 3D mice and 3D Connection CAD mice to it and the keyboard and the numpad. It's not really all that useful at all uh, in terms of being a wireless hub, unless you're just all in, right? I don't know if they're trying to be like Apple with their walled garden sort of a system, but yeah, it can only be a hub to 3D connection devices, right? The fourth of the five specs, precise and effortless typing experience. Uh, the keycaps are ergonomically shaped. <laughs>
Are you serious? Sorry, that's absolutely nonsense. Your keycaps are not ergonomically shaped. That's not a thing. And they are matte coated for comfort and precision. Right, you, you cannot matte coat a keycap for comfort and precision, right? The coating on a keycap does not assist its comfort and precision. Whatever coating is on my keycap does not affect how precise my typing is. That's not a thing. I'm sorry, that's BS. But that just feels like when you're starting to talk about stuff like that, you're getting desperate. That's like advertising a car with body colored bumpers. Right? When you happen to start mentioning that in a car spec, you're desperate. What's in the car? Seats in a steering wheel. Because there's nothing much else to really talk about. Advanced wrist support is the, is, oh, it's the last one. So the, the keyboard's got this huge chin that runs along the bottom uh, for resting your wrists on, which, um, yeah, uh, I mean, we've been buying sort of wrist supports for keyboards for a long time. And that's it. Yeah, that's kind of it. Those are the specs for the Keyboard Pro. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the typing experience on the Keyboard Pro. Uh, and it's like, it's nothing of note. It's nothing special. It's not terrible to type on, but it's just not stand out. Now, 3D Connection have went in nauseatingly heavy on the marketing around the keycaps and the switches, yet they can't tell me what kind of switches are in there, except that they're short throw scissor switches. Uh, but their marketing is unbelievably nauseating. Uh, using terms like <laughs> optimized keycap shape to perceive the key position and minimize the, <laughs> the typing error, uh, the round edges provide satisfying <laughs> feedback. The con this concave keycap surface continuously <laughs> carries. <laughs> 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 implying that there's oh. AI fused into the plastic. Oh, come on, a keycap does not calibrate your finger position. It's absolute fantasy bollocks. Uh, matte coating so your fingers glide effortlessly <laughs> over the surface. Advanced two millimeter travels. Advanced two, what's advanced about two millimeter travel scissor technology? It's absolute, oh, what a load of wank. Uh, low friction provides best in class stable. What is best in class stable keycap experience, man? Come on. This is nothing. There's just nothing to hype up here. Look, and this is not a bad keyboard. It really isn't. It's actually nice to type on. It's just not stand out. It's not a hundred pounds worth of quality. It's plastic. It feels plastic. It feels like any other plastic keyboard from for the likes of Logitech. Uh, do a blind test. You wouldn't know it was a hundred pound keyboard. Uh, it's It feels stiff. The keys feel nice and springy. It doesn't minimize error. It just feels like a keyboard. It's, <laughs> there's nothing special about it, right? It's just nice, but it's not hundred pounds nice. And the, the keys aren't laser etched either. <laughs> the, the, you can't laser etch, well, you can laser etch plastic, but then they're not laser etched keys. And when I say that's the end of the specs, mate, I actually mean it, like the specs stop there, right? So I'm just gonna jump into real talk time here. Now, there'll be plenty of other people who got given one of these and they'll just, this is the professional keyboard for the professional user. Anyone who's a professional, cause these are the rules should buy this. Right, but in reality, mate, whatever keyboard you've got right now, this isn't good enough to replace it. It's not good enough. It's just not got enough to it at the price point it's at. This needs to be a third of the price point it's going in at to be even remotely justifiable. Uh, and it's the end result of complacency. It's the end result, in my opinion anyway, of a lack of competition that 3D Connection have had over the years. Whatever keyboard you've got, it's gonna have something that you find interesting and unique that you're used to having this won't have it, right? And there's not enough to this to make you feel like this is gonna be worthwhile having. And you know, I'm just disappointed with it, you know, at the price point it's coming in at. So for example, it's not backlit. You know, a keyboard over hundred pounds that's not backlit is just, just unacceptable. And when I challenged 3D Connection on that, you know, the, the, the explanations I were given, I was just, I'm just not happy with. For example, it's not backlit because that would affect too much the battery in the numpad, and I'm sorry, but that's just lazy. Because Logitech themselves, who don't forget Form 3D Connection uh, back in 2001, they themselves years ago came up with like an ambient light sensor that they put into a keyboard. And when you moved your hand over that keyboard and over the ambient light sensor, it turns the backlight on. And then when you move your hand away from the keyboard and the ambient light sensor detects that, it turns the backlight off. That's a good innovation, right? Do some iteration of that, put that in there. That saves the battery. And I'm quite happy to have that. I would be happy to have that in there, right? I'd be even happy to charge it a little bit more just to have the backlight in, right? But where's that, right? Just put some effort into it, put some work into it. Just don't go, well, it affects battery life. Let's just move on and be lazy. Let's try and maximize our markup in this. The markup in this must be absolutely insane because, mate, let's face it, let's get real here. 
If you chop off the top 12 buttons of this keyboard and just look at the bottom half of it, what you've got is a cheap five pound keyboard that you can pick off of a supermarket shelf. There's that, there's no USB pass-through on this. I've got a keyboard here, for example, that does have USB pass-through and I use that all the time. Why should I get rid of that for this? What does this offer me to get rid of a feature like that that I use all the time? Uh, those 12 customizable buttons that are on the top that are kind of 3D connection going in with as the main selling point, sure. But do you really want to be taking your eyes off the screen down to the keyboard every time you use the buttons? And if you've got a mouse and a 3D mouse taking your hands off them to the keyboard, back to the devices, it feels like a step backwards of productivity rather than a step forwards. Like if you want to talk about ergonomics, right, and make a big deal about that, like I found this at random on AliExpress. And this has got the same sort of chin as the keyboard pro, right? In fact, this is pillowed for his or her comfort. It's got the same kind of keycaps, right? They do nothing, but it's got them, like the scooped keycaps. It's got the same sort of short throw scissor switches. It's even wireless, right? It's got a battery in it, it's USB-C. It's, it's proper true wireless hub, right? You can connect generic, any other wireless devices to this. It's even right, and this is what I mean about innovation. Whoever's designed this has actually put some thought into this and made a useful thing out of it. It's got front and rear kickstands on it. So if you're in a sitting or a standing position, you can adjust this for either position. That's what I mean about innovation. And all of this, mate, all of this, how much do you think this costs? 18 quid. The keyboard pro doesn't have any of that and it's over a hundred pounds. That's where I'm coming from with this video. Why does it not have any other innovations to it? 3D Connection have had long enough to work on this. There's enough other keyboards in the market to sort of take ideas from and work on their own thinking and thought processes. Where's a, where's a trackpad, a 3D connection trackpad built into this? Like a little small mini trackpad at the top left of the keyboard where you can have swipe commands, pinch and zoom, a little joystick that you can operate with your finger just, just shy of the escape key for little orbits or whatever, or a little scroll for volume or a little scroll for zooming and panning. Just little functions like that. Where are those on this? There's, there's none, it's lazy. I was so disappointed when I opened this up and I'm still disappointed now. I'll not be using this. Uh, I'll be putting it back in the box and fortunately throwing it in the loft. Uh, but there you go. Uh, as we're coming to an end uh, of, of my <laughs> my collaboration with 3D's Connection, unfortunately, probably. Uh, but it is what it is. Look, I, I'm not after, you know, RGB and gamer features and mechanical keys. Like, I'm not into all that stuff. This is just entirely about just something that smacks of poor value and laziness and complacency. And so I'll give you an example of this complacency. And I saw it in this slide, an almost intangible form. This is what I assume is 3D Connections market research. When they were developing the keyboard pro, they would have went out and asked their customers what they want from a, or some of their customers, what they want from a keyboard. I don't know who these people are, where they are, but they said our oh, top three features, we want a number pad, a number pad, <laughs> a number pad. They list it three times in a row. So, you know, like it's this big unicorn thing that they've waited their entire life for and like nobody's ever done it before. And 3D connection of this white knight on a hill sort of coming to their rescue with a numpad separate to a keyboard. It's like, do you not realize being able to go to Amazon all this time and pay 10 quid and get a separate numpad? And 3D connection, they, they're not stupid. 3D connection aren't the little guys anymore, right? They're, they They know you've been able to do that. And they probably just thought to themselves, we'll just slap a numpad onto the side of this keyboard, flog it for a hundred quid. And these guys don't know any better. That's kind of what this feels like. All right, so one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that the, the keyboard's got an on-screen display that shows you what each of the, the 12 buttons are actually mapped to. It's like a little icon. It's not terrible, right? That's useful, but it's not a selling point to a hundred quid keyboard, right? But either way, I just found that really odd. It's like they've taken these bizarre requests and just made a keyboard around these really unusual requests and ignored everything else that a keyboard in 2021 should really kind of have. I'm also hoping that this isn't as intentionally poor as it is, knowing that there's a better one coming around the corner knowing that they're going to revise it later on. Uh, I hope that's not the case. So I'm going to wrap this up with the conclusion, mate. I don't normally uh, make a, a lengthy conclusion at the end of a video, but I feel this one's necessary. Uh, I've went in really hard on this keyboard, like brutal, savage, in fact. I think 3D Connection are going to aggressively defend the value proposition that I've sort of criticized, and that's fine. I kind of hope they do. I'd expect nothing less. But I still feel this is a £12 keyboard with some buttons tagged along the top. Uh, and, you know, when, when people buy a device like this at, at a price point, 
if, if you've done no previous research, if that comes with expectations attached to it and this is just not matching those expectations. The 3D connection will say, well, actually it is because those buttons along the top, you know, the, the 3D connection buttons, those are where the value is. I, I, I just disagree because those buttons, I've, I've praised those to kingdom come in previous 3D connection reviews. That is the core of what 3D connection is, right? Those buttons, the API calls in a CAD programs, being able to activate actual functions in a CAD program instead of just keyboard strokes. But you see, the thing is, it's this is a step too far for it. This is, it's just, in fact, it's a step backwards. If you think about it, you've got a keyboard now with 12 buttons along the top of the keyboard. Now, most people, I'm just, I'm generalizing here, but I'm saying most, are already gonna have a 3D mouse and a 2D mouse. We're gonna, th these are the people who are gonna buy a keyboard like this or think about buying one. Uh, maybe excluding corporate accounts, right? Who are just gonna get them kitted across thousands of desks. If that's the case, don't put it on the web shop, buy it through account managers. But I'm talking about sort of buying it through the web shop. People like you who are watching this video and possibly thinking, hmm, I wonder if it's any good, should I buy it? So you've got one hand on a 3D mouse, you've got one hand on a 2D mouse, and you're looking at your screen. Are you really gonna be wanting to take both hands or one hand off of you know, one of these devices and continuously be looking up and down at the screen to press you know, these buttons? Absolutely not. That's a step backwards. The 3D mouse was brought in to remove that problem. That was the point of the 3D mouse. It was to remove the whole looking around and, you know, up and down and hands around and all of this sort of stuff. But now it's like, no, we're going back to a point where you're having to sort of move your hands all around. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to advocate for that. That's a step backwards. And it, to be honest, it wouldn't matter if the keyboard did other things, if it offered other things than just those buttons. If that was just one of maybe four or five other, other unique items that it brought to the table. But no, that's it. Right? And then the numpad as well. The numpad is, it's honest, that's just a nothing feature. If you really needed a numpad like these mythical marketing sort of questionnaire people, you could have just bought one of Amazon, like I've said many times already. And of course, 3D Connection will, and they will say to me, and they'll say, Neil, you're comparing our keyboard and our numpad to really cheap devices on Amazon and AliExpress here. We're way above that, mate. We're way higher than that. We're prestige. They're just cheap tat. Are you though? You, you, you didn't tell me what scissor switches were in your keyboard. You didn't, I didn't get anything off you to, to really be able to present how this is a premium product. It's fine when you're selling just 3D mice to a consumer where there's no competition. You don't have to compare material to material, you know, switch to switch or, you know, it's braided cable or, you know, these, these sort of individual upgrades over what people are already used to. What's in there? I don't know. What, what kind of, is it, are, they, are these recycled bottles that we're talking about, the plastic's made of? I, I don't know what they are, but what's in there? Is it prestige? Is it premium? I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't particularly feel premium. I'm not going to lie. It's, you know, it, it looks awful. It, it looks hideous, but I'm not, I haven't commented on that at all intentionally throughout the course of this video because it's not important but it looks awful and it it doesn't feel like an expensive keyboard but it you know when you talk about the cheap numpad as well and you could say well you know you could buy a 10 pound numpad off of amazon ours is much more premium well do you know what i might just hedge my bets with that because i can buy 10 of those cheap amazon numpads and still be in the black before i buy a keyboard pro if that's all i really cared about and how long do you think each of those 10 numpads would last before they actually completely fail? I think they'd probably last your entire lifetime. Just a couple of them probably would. That's where I'm coming from with this. It's the value proposition, the fact that the numbers along the top, that's all this keyboard has to offer. The rest of it's just a, it's just a cheap keyboard with nothing to bring to the table. That's my conclusion. But there you go. That's the 3D Connection keyboard. I'm hesitant to call this pro, it really isn't. There's nothing pro about this at all in any context, right? Just, I, I'm, I'm also struggling to understand where any R&D went into this. You know, the buttons that they've got, they, they were already in the 3D mice, right? You know, all the API calls, all the the software side of it, was all, it's already done. They've had that for years in the 3D mice. They've just added it to a keyboard, right? It's just basically a software thing. I don't know where the work's gone into this, what they've been doing with it, but hey, what do I know? That's my take on it. So if you want to support me as I'm dropping sponsors for fun, <laughs> my links are in the description. Thanks very much. This is Tech3D. I'll see you in the next one. Doodles.